In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. The psalm of today is Psalm uh, 78. O oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from a fault. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. He decreed statues for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children, so that the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their, their children. Then they would put their trust in God, and would, for, no, would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, who is a chosen servant Abraham, obeyed your call, rejoicing in your promise, that in him the family of the earth is blessed. Give us faith like his, that in us our promises may be fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, O Sovereign Lord, what can you give me, since I remain childless, and one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir. But a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. The New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter? And uh, the same verse according to King James translation. What shall we then say that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? Uh, if, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as a righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, 
to the man who does not work but trusts God, who justifies the wicked. His faith is credited as righteousness. The Gospel of this Sunday in my, my church here in Finland is from St. Mark, chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that uh, there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after a digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I want to say a couple of words, starting with Apostle Paul's question in Romans 4, verse 1. What shall we then say that Abraham, our father, has found? What does it mean? Was Abraham seeking for something, looking for something? The answer is found in Genesis, the first book of Moses chapter 18, where Abraham says to God, If I have found grace in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. What did Abraham find? He said, Abraham, if I have found grace. Abraham had found the grace of God. Unfortunately, different Bible translations translate this with different words, and it might be difficult for us to find the connection between Genesis 18 and Romans 4. But in the Greek New Testament, the word find is used, as well as, well as find grace in the Old Testament Greek translation Septuagint. Uh, this is what Paul will emphasize in his epistle to the Romans. The key idea is God's grace. Yes, God's grace in Jesus Christ. My second key verse in the Romans is Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as a righteousness. God had given his promise to Abraham, and Abraham believed God, trusted in the promise God had given. In a Christian faith, the key is not what we ourselves are able to do, able to achieve, but it is trust in God and his promises, that we believe in what God has donated us in Jesus Christ. 
Uh, in my church, we used to emphasize a sinner is justified by grace alone, through faith alone, for the sake of Christ alone. Or as St. Paul wrote about us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over the death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Let us pray. O oh God, you have made our hearts into a temple of your Holy Spirit. Teach us to pray to you in spirit and in truth. Lord, make us skillful to do all good works, rouse us to deeds of love through your Spirit, and arm us with the power of faith. Bring us together to your holy temple. Bind us together as living stones. Awake in us true fellowship, so that each may serve the other in holy love. Lord, we ask you, let the whole Christendom be united in truth. Bring together those whom you have chosen. Break down the walls which divide us and restrain all those who create discord. Lord, we pray you that the day may come when there is one flock and one shepherd. Give us strength and ability for our everyday work. Give us patience and faithfulness. Help us to prove true warriors for your eternal truth, so that we may praise you in joy and at all times confess your name. Amen. Let us join in our closing prayer. Remember, O merciful God, your Church. Deliver it from all evil. Perfect it in your love. Bring it united and holy from the four corners of the earth into your kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Splendor and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all.